So we're on to Patroclus fights and dies. Spoiler. 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 <laughs> in older stories, what was appropriate in Greek storytelling was not like the plot arc that we see now, but more of like a pyramid. So they wanted the moment of climax to be in the middle of the story, more or less. Um, this is kind of it because after this moment, it's all downhill from there. Like if it ramps up to Patroclus dying and when he dies, we're in the end game. Um, mm -hmm. So it's not like so much of a surprise or like whatever, but this, the, the inciting incident was Agamemnon pissing off Achilles. And this is the incident that like brings us home to the end of the book. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. a big moment. Poor. Reaching towards the end of this one. Poor Pat, yeah. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. All right, so so they fought to the death around that benched, beaked ship as Patroclus finally <laughs> reached Achilles, his great commander, and wept warm tears like Cleopatra, like a dark spring running down some desolate rock face, its shaded currents flowing. And the brilliant runner Achilles saw him coming, filled with pity, and spoke out winging words. Why in tears, Patroclus? like a girl, a baby running after her mother, begging to be picked up, and she tugs her skirts, holding her back as she tries to hurry off, all tears fawning up at her, till she takes her in her arms. That's how you look, Patroclus, streaming <laughs> live tears. But why? <laughs> <laughs> That's how you look, Patroclus. <laughs> Maybe ask before you were home. Home. I'm so excited for you guys. Oh my god. <laughs> Some news <laughs> for the Myrmidons. News for me. Some message from Thea yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that you That's alone good. have heard. They tell me. Oh shit. Man. That's Patroclus. No, Edis. Manatias? Yeah. Oh. Okay. <laughs> um, they tell me Menetius, actor's son, is still alive, and Peleus, uh, Aeacus. Uh, uh, yay! Aeacus. <laughs> I like that. Oh, bro. <laughs> I just have like a Kian and Atticus in my life. Some of those words. <laughs> Um, he uh, just did both our dads. So Menoetius is, is um, Patroclus' dad and Peleus is Achilles' his dad. So he's like, both our dads are alive, so like, there's no other reason for you to be crying. <laughs> <laughs> Why else are you crying? crying? <laughs> Stop being a bitch. What you doing? <laughs> yeah, dude, Achilles is really... All right. So that's the Chad extreme. What? <laughs> <laughs> so you have no reason to cry. Yeah, yeah, that was, we all knew that from the beginning. <laughs> no need to be crying here. Yeah. Um, okay, so this guy's son lives on among his Myrmidons. If both our fathers had died, we'd have some cause for grief or weeping over the Argives. Are you? Seeing them die against the hollow ships, repaid for their offenses? Out with it now. Don't harbor it deep inside you. We must share it all. Best way to get someone to talk about their feelings. <laughs> what the fuck is wrong? <laughs> little girl, why are you crying? <laughs> What's wrong? It's true. <laughs> he just kept roasting. He doesn't know when to stop. If there's one thing we know about Achilles, is that he doesn't know when to just drop it. Like, yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's like literally his only personality trait at this point. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> As a therapist, that is how I get people to talk about feelings. <laughs> it's like, hey, baby, what <laughs> <laughs> Why are you crying like a little baby? <laughs> What's wrong, you stupid baby? <laughs> Did your dad die? No, then why are you crying? There's no, no other reason to cry, stupid. <laughs> they just open right up. They just figure their lives out right there. <laughs> they just get mad. They're like, yeah, there's another reason to cry. Let me tell you about it. <laughs> <laughs> Like, my dad's dead and you're like oh shit that's the only reason to oh great reason okay <laughs> <laughs> like never mind sorry <laughs> I like why patroclus is so sad 
Mm. With a wrenching groan, you answered your friend, Patroclus, oh my rider. Achilles, son of Peleus, greatest of the Achaeans, spare me your anger, please. Such heavy blows have overwhelmed the troops. Our former champions all laid up on the ships. All are hit by arrows or run through by spears. There's powerful Diomedes brought down by an archer. Odysseus wounded and Agamemnon too, the famous spearman. And Euripides took an arrow shot in the thigh. Healers are working over them, using all their drugs, trying to bind their wounds. But you are intractable, Achilles. Pray God such anger never seizes me, such rage you nurse. Cursed in your own courage, what good will a man, even one in the next generation, get from you unless you defend the archives from disaster? You heart of iron. He, ha- he was not your father, the horseman Peleus. Thetis was not your mother. Never. The salt gray sunless ocean gave you birth, and the towering blank rocks, your temper so relentless. But still, if deep down some prophecy makes you balk, some doom your noble mother revealed to you from Zeus, well and good, at least send me into battle, quickly. Let the whole Myrmidon army follow my command. I might bring some light of victory to our Argives and give me your own fine armor to buckle on my back so the Trojans might take me for you, Achilles. Yes, hold off from attack and Achaea's fighting sons get second wind, exhausted as they are. Breathing room in war is all too brief. We're fresh, unbroken, the enemy's battle-weary. We could roll those broken Trojans back to Troy, clear from the ships and shelters. So he pleaded, lost in his own great innocence, condemned to beg for his own death and brutal doom, and moved now to his depths, the famous runner cried. No, no, my prince Patroclus, what are you saying? Prophecies? None that touch me, none I know of. Liar. (laughs) <laughs> he's a liar <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> that's literally the whole thing <laughs> first you're crying now you're telling made up shit <laughs> <laughs> no doom my noble mother revealed to me from Zeus just this terrible pain that wounds me to the quick when one man attempts to plunder a man his equal a command, a commandeer to commandeer a prize exalting so in his own power that's the pain that wounds me suffering such humiliation that girl the sons of Achaea picked her as my prize and i'd sacked a walled city won her with my spear but right from my grasp he tears her mighty agamemnon that son of atreus treating me like some vagabond some outcast stripped of all my rights enough let bygones be bygones now. Done oh. is done. How on earth can a man rage on forever? Still, by God, I said I would not relax my anger, not till <laughs> the cries and carnage reached my own ships. So you, you strap my splendid armor on your back. You lead our battle-hungry myrmidons into action. If now, in fact, the black cloud of the Trojans blasts down on the ships with full gale force, our backs to the breaking surf, but clinging still to a cramped strip of land, the Argives lost. The whole city of Troy comes trampling down on us, daring, wild. Why? They cannot see the brow of my helmet flash before their eyes? Oh, they'd soon run for their lives and choke the torrent beds of the fields with their corpse, with all their corpses, if only the mighty Agamemnon met me with respect. Now, as it is, they're fighting round our camp. No spear rages now in the hand of Diomedes, keen to save the Argives from disaster. I can't even hear the battle cry of Agamemnon break from his hated skull. But it's man-killing Hector calling his Trojans on 
Here's war cries crashing around me, savage cries of his Trojans sweeping the whole plain, victors bringing the Argive armies to their knees. Even so, Patroclus, fight disaster off the ships. Fling yourselves at the Trojans full force before they gut your holes with leaping fire and tear away the beloved day of our return. But take this command to heart, obey it to the end. So you can win some great, so you can win great honor, great glory for me in the eyes of all the Argive ranks and they, they'll send her back, my light and lovely girl and top it off with troves of glittering gifts. <sighs> <laughs> so he's so angry and then he's like <laughs> glittering gifts okay wait <laughs> <laughs> the tone just like goes up and then up and then yeah, yeah. just going off tangents <laughs> once you have whipped the enemy from the fleet you must come back Patroclus even if Zeus the thundering lord of Hera lets you seize your glory you must not burn for war against these Trojans madmen lusting for battle not without me you will only make my glory that much less you must not lost in the flush and fire of triumph slaughtering trojans outright drive your troops to troy what if one of the gods who never die comes down from olympus heights to intervene in battle the deadly archer loves his trojans dearly no, you must turn back soon as you bring the light of victory to the ships. Let the rest of them cut themselves to pieces on the plain. O oh, would to God, Father Zeus, Athena, and Lord Apollo. Not one of all these Trojans could flee his death, not one, no Argive either, but we could stride from the slaughter so we could bring Troy's hollowed crown of towers toppling down around us. You and I alone. Solid. That was just a roller coaster of a speech from Achilles. <laughs> yeah, that was a roller coaster for me. <laughs> yeah, good job. Really good job reading that. <laughs> but you're right, he does kind of flip flop between the two. He's very angry, his emotions are overtaking his speech. But he's mm. like, I'm so mad. And then he's like, but that's a really good idea. <laughs> <laughs> and he commits so hard to liking the idea despite his rage. Right. <laughs> so we're gonna see what that looks like from Patroclus's point of view real quick. I knelt and pressed his hands to my face. My cheeks flowed with tears unending, like water over dark rock. For me, then, I said, save them for me. I know what I'm asking you, but I ask it for me. If you love me. He hesitated another moment, his green eyes searching mine. Then slowly, he nodded. Don't do it. Don't do it. <laughs> That's actually really sweet. Yeah. What was angry? <laughs> Lala's angry, yeah. No, he's, he's like way more of a softie in this. Um, they're just in love, and that's all they want to do is be in love, but prophecies and anger. Honor get in the way of their love. Honor. Kills me every time. Well, it uh, kills the chocolate. Oh, come on. Too oh, soon. It hasn't even oh, happened yet, dude. Oh, Calm down. Oh, 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 Wait till after fine. he dies before you start making fun of him. Yeah, I gotta say, I like that explanation of this scene a lot better. It, it does make it a lot easier to understand. He always sounds a lot less crazy. He's so less crazy. Yeah, I mean, like, it's just more like real people. You can just kind of get the characters a lot better. I can't recommend it enough. We're reading a different book. <laughs> <laughs> And so the comrades roused each other now, but Ajax could hold his post on the decks no longer. He was overwhelmed by the latest salvos, driven back by the will of Zeus and the fearless Trojan spearmen, hurling blows nonstop, a terrific din at his temples, his shining helmet clashing under repeated blows. <laughs> Relentless blows, 
beating his forged cheek irons, and the joint of his left shoulder ached with labor, forever bracing his huge burnished shield rock steady. But they could not wrench it loose from around his body for all their pelting weapons. Again and again he fought for breath, gasping, bathed in sweat, rivering down his body, his limbs soaked and sleek. Where could he find some breathing room in battle? Wherever he looked, pains heaped on pains. Sing to me now, you muses, you who hold Olympus's vaulting halls, how fire was first pitched on Achaea's ships. Hector lunged at Ajax toe-to-toe, -to -toe, hacked his ashwood pike with a heavy sword and striking the socket just behind the point, he slashed the head clean off, leaving the shaft, the lopped stump dangling in Ajax's fist, useless, bronze head bounding away, clanging along the ground. And deep in his heart, brave Ajax knew and shuddered. Here was work of the gods, thundering Zeus on high, cutting him off from battle, dashing all his plans. Zeus determined to grant the Trojans triumph now. So Ajax drew back, out of range, and then they flung their tireless fire at the fast-trimmed ship. She was up in flames at once, engulfed in quenchless fire, in a blaze. What in a flash, the blaze went swirling round the stern, and Achilles slapped his thighs and urged Patroclus. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I was so focused on I was like, wow, there's a lot of thigh slaps. Yeah, there is like it was pretty distracted. Like Patrick was slapping his thighs. These muscular thighs. To arms. <laughs> Patroclus, prince and master horseman. I can see the blaze go roaring up the ships. They must not destroy them. No escape route then. Quick, strap on my gear, I'll rouse the troops. That was all, and Patroclus armed himself in Achilles' gleaming bronze. In the other book, Achilles straps him in, and then they share their last kiss, and it's really sweet. Aw. Sad. <laughs> That's the sexy chapter. That's <laughs> the sexy chapter. No, there's a more sexy chapter. <laughs> all right so he gets dressed people get dressed in this all the time we know they get dressed whatever it's it's very fancy <laughs> people get dressed all the time <laughs> <laughs> like I mean, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's a little you are so real. They dress up all the time. <laughs> this one's a little special because it is achilles's armor um oh, yes. his special helmet his special very very shiny uh mm. bronze chest plate so it's very particular. So when they see this, they're going to be like, that's Achilles for sure. Mm -hmm. uh, unless, mm -hmm. you know, maybe his helmet gets knocked off. Or maybe uh, it becomes super obvious that Patroclus kind of sucks at fighting. Um, <laughs> it's almost <laughs> like they didn't think it through. Uh, <laughs> it's almost like, it's almost like it's Patroclus about just three hours. made something up and Achilles was like, yeah, great idea. <laughs> yeah. yeah, do it. No time <laughs> to think. Yo, I yeah. Hey, they spent so much time talking, but not actually like strategizing. Yeah, seriously. Yeah. It's like it was all about do it or don't, but not like, is it a good idea? Like, no, it's not. <laughs> but also, wasn't this Nestor's idea? Originally, yeah, Nestor's. Yeah. Nestor was like, you should do this. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, the moral of the story is that Nestor sucks. Nestor I'll killed the chocolate. Nestor killed the chocolate. So the only weapon of Achilles that Patroclus did not take was the great man's spear, weighted, heavy, tough. No other Achaean fighter could heft that shaft. Only oh. Achilles had the <clears throat> skill to wield it well. Uh oh. <laughs> There's no symbolism. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> There's none. <laughs> Pelian ash it was, a gift to his father Peleus, presented by Chiron the centaur once, hewn on Pelion's crest by, to be the death of heroes. So basically, Patroclus can't pick up this shaft because it's whatever. All right. So <laughs> <laughs> big. Stop reading into it. Sometimes the shaft is just the shaft. It's just a <laughs> shaft. <laughs> now the war teams, the horses. Patroclus ordered Tomadon to yoke them quickly, a man he honored next to Achilles, breaker of men, always firmest in battle, nerves to wait the call. So at his command, Tomadon yoked the horses, the rapid stallions, grown beauty, and dapple. <laughs> The man that <laughs> 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 
<laughs> Wait, there were these their names? Yeah. Uh, dude, why do you go from like Transformers to Rowan Beauty and Dapple? Like, yeah. <laughs> they named their horses color horse colors. Like Rowan and Dapple are just colors of horses. Oh. Like this is my horse, white horse. This is my horse, white horse. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes. It probably sounded cooler in Greek. Yeah. Like naming your dog like Spot. Sandy. Yes, yeah. They name the horses. I hope they don't die. Here's <laughs> my dog. One leg is longer than the other. That race the gales. Magnificent team. The storm wind filly, lightfoot, bold for the west wind, grazing the lush green tr- grass along the ocean's tide. And into the traces, he ran the third horse, the purebred Bold Dancer. Oh my gosh. <laughs> That's a hot name. <laughs> Wait, hold on. Is Westwind a horse name or are these horses, is the wind, like the li- literal wind, the dad of these horses? As far as I'm aware, it's yes. <laughs> wind. <laughs> the two beauty. Rome Beauty and Dapple are immortal horses. Um, uh, and what? what is the wind? One of them talks real soon. Not this chapter, but I swear That's it happens. Awesome. Awesome. This is so, this only this is so distracting. Oh my yes. god. <laughs> yeah. What like you're you're talking about this is like the climax like the not the climax, but this is the yeah, this, this is, is the, the chapter yeah. and we're like talking about horses. Into black <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Why no. wouldn't why wouldn't he just like the translator keep the Greek names? I don't know. I it's so distracting to be like your pie so is talking about Dapple, <laughs> Dapple, <laughs> and Roll of Duty. He should have. Wait, is Lightfoot is a horse? That is their um, Lightfoot mother. Oh, okay. Um, so Lightfoot and the Wind gave birth to um, B- Beauty and Dapple, and then Bold Dancer is uh-huh. just a normal mortal horse but he's really good he's just like the best regular horse so mm-hmm. he's also here it's not a horse. Regular horse. <laughs> yeah <There's your> horse. <laughs> right here, purebred bold dancer achilles seized him once when he stormed eaton city a mortal war horse pacing immortal horses now he's moving yeah. up in the world he's moving up. so how this, bold <laughs> yeah this is when they kiss just imagine they kiss now um with the horse and then Patroclus gets in the chariot. Prince Achilles, ranging the ranks of Myrmidons, arrayed them along the shelters, all in armor. Hungry as wolves that rend and bolt, raw flesh, hearts filled with battle frenzy that never dies, off on the cliffs, cliffs, ripping apart some big antlered stag, they gorge on the kill till all their jaws drip red with blood. Then down in a pack they lope to a pooling dark spring, their lean, sharp tongues lapping the water's surface, belching bloody meat. But the fury, never shaken, builds inside their chests through the glutted bellies burst. So wild, the Myrmidon captains, Myrmidon field commanders, swarming round Achilles' dauntless friend in arms. And there in the midst, Achilles stood like the god of war, urging his charioteers and fighters bracing shields. So the Myrmidons know, like our side knows, that it's not Achilles, but the Trojans don't. There were 50 fast black ships that bore his troops when Achilles, dear to Zeus, sailed east for Troy. 50 fighters aboard each, and here they all are getting ready to fight. But soon as Achilles mustered all battalions, he positioned in battle order, led by the captains. He imposed this stern command on all his troops. Myrmidons. I'm not Achilles. Yeah. Myrmidons. <laughs> I'm not Achilles. <laughs> I was like really ready. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. It's okay. I was trying to make up for not being ready last time. <laughs> Myrmidons, <laughs> not one of you dare forget those threats you hurled from the fast trim ships against the Trojans while I, oh, all while I raged and I was the one you blamed down to the last fighter, brutal son of Pelis. Pel- Peleus? Yeah. Banana Peleus. <laughs> Brutal son of Peleus. Your mother nursed you on Gaul. 
merciless Iron Man, confining your own men to the ships against their will. So home we go in those ships and cut the seas again, since now such deadly anger strikes our captain. Denouncing me, my comrades, clustered together, always grumbling. Well, here's a tremendous work of battle. Look, blazing before your eyes, and just the sort you longed for all those days. So each man, tense with courage, fight the Trojans down. Yeah! Ooh. That was the cry that fired each soldier's heart. Hearing the king's command, the ranks pulled closer. Tight as a mason packs a good stone wall. Blocks on granite blocks for a storied house that fights the ripping winds. Crammed so close, the crested helmets, the war shields bulging, jutting, buckler to buckler, helm to helm, man to man, massed tight in the horsehair crests on glittering helmet horns, brushed as they tossed their heads, the battalion's bulk so dense. And out before them all, two men took battle stations, Patroclus and Automedon, seized with a single fury to fight in the comrades' vanguard far in front. Achilles Meanwhile, strode back to his shelter now and opened the lid of the princely inlaid sea chest that glistening footed Thetis stowed in his ship to carry. Filled to the brim with war shirts, windproof cloaks and heavy fleecy rugs and there it rested, his handsome well-wrought cup. No other man would drink the shining wine from its glowing depths, nor would Achilles pour the wine to any other god, none but Father Zeus. Lifting it from the chest, he purified it with sulfur crystals first, then rinsed it out with water running clear, washed his hands, and filled it bright with wine. And then, taking a stand before his lodge, he prayed, pouring the wine to earth and scanning the high skies, and the god who loves the lightning never missed a word. King Zeus, Pelas. <laughs> 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 and that was the prayer. Yeah, let's... Uh, also, why are we talking about his mom's glistening feet? It's a long story. Why don't we not talk about mom's glistening feet? In her epitaph, she just has really good feet. I don't That's like sweet. how often it comes up, though. Me neither. <laughs> All right. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's Pelasgian. Pelasgian. You think it's what? Pelasgian? Pelasgian. <laughs> Gian? Whatever. <laughs> King <No>. Zeus. <laughs> Pelasgian <laughs> Zeus, Lord of Dodona's holy shrine, dwelling far away, brooding over Dodona's bitter winters. Your prophets dwelling round you, Zeus, the celly sleeping along the ground with unwashed feet. If you honored me last time and heard my prayer and rained destruction down on all Achaea's ranks, now, once more, I beg you, bring my prayer to pass. I myself hold on shore with the beached ships here but I send my comrade forth to war with troops of Myrmidons. Launched, launch glory along with him, high lord of thunder, Zeus. Fill his heart with courage so even Hector learns. If Patroclus has the skill to fight his wars alone, my friend in arms, or his hands can rage unvanquished only when I go wading in and face the grind of battle. But once he repels the roaring onslaught from the ships, let him come back to me and our fast fleet unharmed with all my armor round him, all our comrades fighting round my friend. Oh, so sad. <laughs> we get very few moments where characters are alone in this book, and this is like one of them. Um, it's just, it highlights how important Patroclus is to Achilles. Um, yeah, Sad. so important. Achilles didn't get the memo of the name of this chapter. <laughs> <laughs> Yikes. Gee, I wonder what this chapter's called. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I mean, it's a good device because all the people watching the, whatever, the um, presentation of this poem, 
like know that Patroclus dies and they know that Achilles starts fighting because of Patroclus. So like it's dramatic mm-hmm. irony. The sadder mm-hmm. and the more that you could draw out Achilles praying for the Patroclus to come back, the sadder mm-hmm. it's going to be when he doesn't. And the more justified mm-hmm. his even more anger, anger is. So I kind of like that. Mm-hmm. So Achilles prayed and Zeus in all his wisdom heard those prayers. One prayer the father granted, the other he denied. Um. Patroclus would drive the onslaught of the ships. That much Zeus granted true, but denied him safe and sound return from battle. Once Achilles had poured the wine and prayed to Zeus, he returned to his shelter, stowed the cup in the chest, and then took his stand outside, his spirit yearning still to watch Achaeans and Trojans struggle to the death. Myrmidons, battalions, ranging in armor with great-hearted Patroclus, moving out now, the fury bursting inside them, suddenly charged the Trojans. They swarmed forth like wasps from a roadside nest when boys have made it their sport to set them seething day after day, tormenting them round their wayside hive. Idiot boys. They make a menace for their every man in sight. Any innocent traveler passing them on the road can stir them accidentally, up in arms in a flash, all in a swarm come pouring, each one ranging down to fight for home and children. Such frenzy seized their hearts, Myrmidons pouring out of the ships, ceaseless shouts rising, and over them all Patroclus's war cries, rousing comrades. Myrmidons, brothers in arms of Peleus' son Achilles, fight like men, my friends, call up your battle fury. Now we must win high honor for Peleus' royal son far the greatest fighter among the Argive fleet, and we who fight beside him the bravest troops, so even mighty Atreides can see how mad he was to disgrace Achilles, the best of the Achaeans. He closed with a shout and fired each fighter's heart, and down in a mass they launched against the Trojans, ships around them echoing back their shattering cries. The Trojans, soon as they saw Menoecius's gallant son, thinking that he's Achilles, himself and his low loyal driver, flare in brazen gear, all their courage quaked, their columns buckled, thinking swift Achilles had tossed to the winds his hard rage that held him back by the ships and chosen friendship toward the Argives now. Each Trojan soldier glancing left and right, how could he run from sudden plunging death? Patroclus was first to hurl his glinting spear right at the center mass, the fighters milling round the stern of Prostalius's blazing ship and hit Perechmes' firebrand who led the Peronians, the master riders from Amadon, from Axis' broad currents. Patroclus slashed his right shoulder and down he went, his back slamming the dust with a jolting groan as companions panicked round him. Brave Peonians, Patroclus whipped the terror in all their hearts when he killed the chief who topped them all in battle. He rode them off the ships. He quenched the leaping fire, leaving Prestelius' hulk half burnt but upright still, and the Trojans scattered back with high, shrill cries. The Argives poured against them, back by the hollow hulls, the din of battle incessant, an Argive breakthrough. Bright as the moment Zeus, the lord of lightning, moves from a craggy mountain ridge, a storm cloud massing dense, and all the lookout peaks stand out in the jutting cliffs and the steep ravines and down from the high heavens bursts the boundless bright air. So now the Argives drove the ravening fire clear of the warships, winning a little breathing room, not much, no real halt to the bulk and rush of battle. For despite the surge of the Argives primed for war, the Trojans were still not wheeling round in headlong rout away from the black hulls. Forced back from them, true, they braced for battle still and made a stand. Deadlock. And they fight for a long time. <laughs> <laughs> Patroclus isn't um, useless. He's a little useless in the Song of Achilles. He's not that useless in the Iliad. Um, he fights pretty well and he just takes people down, keeping in mind that he's being helped out by the gods um, and that this is like a prophecy. So in a rush, each Argive captain killed his man as ravenous wolves come swooping down on lambs. Shrieking flight, the only thing on the Trojans' mind. They forgot their fighting fury. Ajax is fighting Hector again. 
And Hector? Hector's speeding horses swept him away, <laughs> armor and all, leaving his men to face their fate. Now Hector's running away. Uh -huh. What's that about? What's that about? Trojans oh. trapped but struggling on in the deep trench, hundreds of plunging war teams dragging chariots down, snapping the yoke poles, ditched their master's cars, and Patroclus charged them, heart of fire for the kill, shouting his archives forward. Slaughter Trojans! <laughs> 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 Straight to the point. <laughs> yeah, yeah <laughs> words. Cries of terror breaking as Trojans choked all roads, their lines ripped to pieces, up from under the hoofs, a dust storm swirling into clouds as rearing horses broke into stride again and galloped back to Troy, leaving ships and shelters in their wake. So the plan is working. Patroclus, wherever he saw the biggest masses dashing before him, there he steered, plowing ahead with savage cries, and fighters tumbled out of their chariots headfirst, crushed under the axles, war cars crashing over. Yes, but straight across the trench went his own careening team at a superhuman bound. He's going. <laughs> He's going. Magnificent racing stallions, gifts of the gods to Peleus, shining immortal gifts, straining breakneck on as Patroclus's high courage urged him against Prince Hector, keen for the kill. But Hector's veering horses swept them clear. So Patroclus is not listening to Achilles's advice to just scare them and then come back. Um, he's now wanting to kill Hector, which he just okay. is not gonna do. He's just not gonna do it. He's just not that good. You're just not no. that good. Just not that good. <laughs> you good. Yeah. Just not that good. But he's fighting on. He's actually hacking them down, making them pay the price for Argives slaughtered. Hmm. Now, middle of 426, we get Sarpedon coming back. Now, that's Zeus's son, oh head of the Lycians. Now, Sarpedon. Watching his comrades drop and die, basically as Patroclus picks them off, wore shirts billowing free as Patroclus killed them, dressed his god godlike Lycians down with a harsh shout. Lycians, where's your pride? Why are you running? Now be fast attack. I'll take him on myself. See who he is who routes us, wreaking havoc against us, cutting the legs from under squads of good brave men. All right, so now Zeus is like, but I love my son, Sarpedon. He's the man I love my most, whatever, blah. <laughs> Even though he's doomed to die at the hands of Patroclus, and then Hera is like, but if you save your son, every god is going to want to save his son or her son. And then Zeus is like, you're right. Wait, sis, when does Zeus just agree to that? This Hera whole book, he's been like, y'all can't do it, but I'll do it. Hera outflanks. What can I say? Jesus. Oh, yeah, yeah. Hera, <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so they come to a compromise, though, that as soon as Sarpedon is killed, as he is prophesized to do, um, Zeus is going to send down sleep to carry uh, Sarpedon's body back home so that he can have a proper funeral. It's very important. I hope we all remember that like, the proper funeral processes are like insanely important because if it's not done right, you won't go to the afterlife and you'll just like be a ghost, basically, which sucks. Um, yeah. So, oh man, guys, oh man. Oh man. <laughs> now, as the two came closing on each other, Patroclus suddenly picked off Thrustlemaeus, the famous driver, the aide who flanked Sarpedon, he speared him down the guts and loosed his limbs. But Sarpedon hurled next with a flashing lance and missed his man, but he hit the horse Bold Dancer. Not oh, Bold no. Dancer. I called it. They named the horses. <laughs> now they're hurt. We knew him so well. <laughs> <laughs> is story. Bold Dancer one of the god horses, or is he a regular horse? No, this is horse? the normal the horse. Regular horse? No, yeah. The normal horse with a lot but of like a really good normal horse. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Yeah. Horse was That's too bad. Yeah, right? 
stabbing his right shoulder and down the stallion went, screaming his life out, shrieking down in the dust as his life breath winged away. And the paired horses reared apart, a raspy creak of the yoke, the reins flying, fouled as the trace horse thrashed in the dust and death throes. The other horses are freaking out because they're now pinned to a dead horse. Mm. But the fine mm-hmm. spearman Automedon found a cure for that. Drawing his long, sharp sword from his sturdy thigh, he leapt with a stroke to cut poor, bold dancer free. It worked. The team righted, pulled at the reins, and again the fighters closed with savage frenzy, dueling now to the death. So now Sarpedon and Patroclus are in a duel. Again, Sarpedon missed. Over Patroclus' left shoulder, his spearhead streaked. Never touched his body. Patroclus hurled next. The bronze launched from his hand. No miss. A mortal hit. Oh, jeez. That was easy. He struck him right where the midriff packs the pounding heart. And down Sarpedon fell as an oak or white poplar falls. A towering pine that shipwrights up on a mountain. <laughs> what? <laughs> like every <laughs> other thing is like... Like, they die, and it's glorious, but this one, it's like, he falls like a tree this time. He's a tree. <laughs> <laughs> he stretched in front of his team in his chariot, sprawled and roaring, clawing the bloody dust. Don't worry, it's, it's gross. Okay, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's so gross. <laughs> We're back on track. Yeah. Oh as, the bull, as the bull, a marauding lion, cuts from the herd, tawny and grief, great-hearted among the shambling cattle, dies, bellowing under the lion's killing jaws. So now Sarpedon, captain of Lycia's shieldsmen, died at Patroclus' hands and died raging still, crying out his beloved comrade's name. This is Sarpedon's last words. Glaucus, oh dear friend, dear fighter, soldier, soldier, now is the time to prove yourself a spearman, daring, a daring man of war. Now, if you are brave, make grueling battle your one consuming passion. First find Lycia's captains, range the ranks, Spur them to fight and shield Sarpedon's body. Then you, Glaucus, you fight for me with bronze. You'll hang your head in shame every day of your life. If the Argives strip my armor here at the anchored ships where I gave, uh, where I have gone down fighting, hold on. Full force. Spur all our men to battle. Death cut him <laughs> short after a pair. Well, not that. <laughs> Yeah. It's like Yogi done. <laughs> Go to sleep. <laughs> yeah, so basically, please don't let them take my armor. Uh, yeah, right. The end, <laughs> the end closed in around him, swirling down his eyes, choking off his breath. Patroclus planted a heel against his chest, wrenched the spear from his wound, and the midriff came out with it. So he dragged out both the man's life breath and the weapon point together. Close by, the Myrmidons clung to the panting stallion, straining to bolt away, free of their master's chariot. But grief came over Glaucus, hearing his comrades call. Oh, yeah, yeah. So Glaucus does not need a, a moment here, but he gets one. He, he prays to uh, Apollo. He's like, Apollo, please help me. Blah. I beg you, Apollo. Now he's injured. So he's like, I can't help right now. So he asks Apollo to heal his injury so that he can then get help from other people. And Apollo is like, yeah, sure, pring. So um, Glaucus runs down and he tells Aeneas, who later goes on to found Italy, Loki, and Hector. Mm-hmm. And he's like, uh, 4.30, he's like, Hector, please, like, like Sarpedon died, we need to save him. Ares has cut him down with Patroclus's brazen spear because even this guy knows that Patroclus isn't that good. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we know he's not. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> so, hard uh, grief came sweeping over the Trojans' heads, unbearable, irrepressible. He was their city's bastion, always, even though he came from foreign parts, because he is a foreigner, after all. Mm. One sec, I'm just checking. Something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. And a mass of allies marched at his command, and he excelled them all in battle always. So now they went at the Argives, out for blood, furious for Sarpedon. Hector swung them round. But the Argives surged Patroclus' savage spirit. He spurred the Aintes first, both ablaze for battle. 
Ajax, Ajax, come now thrill the fight as before, brave among the brave, but now be braver still. Their captain's down, the first to storm our wall, the great Sarpedon. If only we could seize his body, mutilate him, shame him, tear his gear from his back, and any comrade of his who tries to shield his corpse, bring that enemy down with ruthless bronze. Jesus. That's brutal. Yeah. The chocolate's turned out to be a piece of shit. It's, I mean, seems like it, kind of, a little bit. Yeah. He's under the power of the gods a little bit. Um, oh, he just kind of like, drew him mad? He's like, kill, kill. Are you <laughs> saying the gods are pieces of shit? No. no oh. Can't be. Oh, no. I did. I'm, like, I'm like no. waiting to find someone in this who I'm like, like the whole time I'm not like, they they're kind of a piece of shit. Like I feel like that's like a trend. <laughs> yeah. Like, been in these days. <laughs> yeah. Like, Everyone who's is like not that thing. much of a piece of shit. Perseus. Menelaus. Menelaus, kinda. I mean, he's just like I want my wife back. <laughs> yeah. Like <laughs> exactly. Fair, I guess. Odysseus hasn't sucked that much so far, but he's also not yeah. that great. He's just like a, a bastard, though. Like, yeah, he's still a good of a isn't he? He sucks in the next one. Oh, really? Like the Odyssey? <laughs> oh, really? He sucks in the Odyssey? Oh, my God. That's awesome. Uh, they're fighting now over Sarpedon's body, and Zeus made it nighttime. Because <laughs> I don't know. Like, Zeus, <laughs> Zeus is trying to save his son's body. He doesn't want them to take his armor, and Zeus is like, let me make it night so it's more difficult for all of us. No know. one can see the armor in the night. No. <laughs> <laughs> um, Hector then kills Epigeus, who's a Greek, and um, grief for his dead companion seized Patroclus now. He tore through frontline fighters swift as a hawk, diving to scatter crows and fear-struck starlings straight at the Lycians. Patroclus, oh my rider. Straight at the pressing Trojans' ranks, you swooped, enraged at your comrade's death, and struck Thanethalus, Thanelaus. Man, mm-hmm. I couldn't pronounce that the first time, and I really wanted to this time. <laughs> You're like, I got this, I got this. Thanelaus. Athamenius' favorite son. God damn it. A big rock. He throws a rock at his neck, just, and then kills him. Um, that's so that's rough. Brutal. That sucks. It snapped the tendons strung to the skull's base. That's such a rough way to die. Yeah. Wow. Never saw it coming. Yeah, so that happens. <laughs> Skip a little bit. Um, so they're still fighting over Sarpedon's body. Not even a hawk-eyed scout could make out Sarpedon. The man's magnificent body was covered over head to toe buried under a mass of weapons, blood, and dust. But they still kept swarming round and round the corpse, like flies in a sheepfold buzzing over brimming pails in the first spring days when the buckets flood with milk. So veteran troops kept swarming round the corpse, never pausing. Nor did mighty Zeus for a moment turn his shining eyes from the clash of battle. He kept them fixed on the struggling mass forever, the father's spirit churning, thrashing out the ways, the numberless ways to cause Patroclus' slaughter. To kill him, too, in this present bloody rampage over Sarpedon's splendid body? Hector, in glory, cutting Patroclus down with hacking bronze and tearing the handsome war gear off his back? Or let him take still more, piling up his kills? As Zeus turned things over, that way seemed the best. The valiant friend-in-arms of Peleus' son Achilles would drive the Trojans and Hector, helmed in bronze, back to Troy once more, killing them by platoons. And Zeus began with Hector. He made the man a coward. Hector, leaping back in his chariot, swerving to fly, shouted out fresh orders. Retreat, Trojans, now! He knew that Zeus had tipped the scales against him. They all scattered in panic. They just leave Sarpedon there, and Patroclus takes his stuff. Now, they're gone. They've left the ships. Achilles said, that's enough. Just get them out of the ships and then come home. Don't try to sack Troy on your own, babe. 
you can't do it. <laughs> Baby. Doesn't listen. Patroclus could have gone home, didn't, mm -hmm. giving a cry to Automedon, whipping on his team. Patroclus went for Troy and Lycia's lines, blind in his fatal frenzy. Luckless soldier. If only he had obeyed Achilles' strict command, he might have escaped his doom, the stark death, the stark night of death. But the will of Zeus will overpower the will of men. So Zeus is actually controlling this whole thing. That's why Patroclus is great, and that's why uh, Patroclus is ignoring Achilles' order. But also why he's a piece of shit right now. Yeah, it's Zeus, and Zeus sucks. Zeus, Zeus is doing it. Zeus is overpowering the will of men. Zeus who strikes in fear in even the bravest man of war and tears away his triumph all in a lightning flash. And at other times he will spur a man to battle just as he urged Patroclus' fury now. Mm. Patroclus, who was the first god you slaughtered? He didn't slaughter any gods. Oh, <laughs> <Patroclus>. <laughs> that would be sick. Like, I'm not with these Trojans, let's go. <laughs> I'm working my way up to Zeus. Killed Zeus' son. <laughs> I'm coming for you. That'd be so like metal. Controlled by Zeus, goes after Zeus. Shit. <laughs> this is a video game you would love. <laughs> yeah. This is a video game if called you. God of War. <laughs> Patroclus, who was the first you slaughtered? Who the last? When the great gods called you down to death. First, Adrestus, then Atonois, then Eclecus, then Perimus, <laughs> then his son, Apestor, and Melanippus, then in a flurry, Alas. Melanippus. Melius and Pilardes, he killed them all, <laughs> but the rest were bent on flight. And then and there, the Achaeans might have taken Troy, her towering gates toppling under Patroclus's power, heading the vanguard, storming on with his spear. So they've literally gone all the way to the gates of Troy. They're at the gates of Troy. This is as close as they have ever come to sacking Troy. Mm. He's there. Mm. And but Patroclus Apollo. is like, I think I can do better, though. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I got this. <laughs> but Apollo took his stand on the massive rampart, his mind blazing with death for him and help for Troy. Three times Patroclus charged the jut of the high wall, and three times Apollo battered the man and hauled him back, God's immortal hands beating down on the gleaming shield. Then at Patroclus' fourth assault, like something superhuman, the god shrieked down his winging words of terror. Back, Patroclus! Prince, oh. go back! <laughs> Hot. It is not the will of fate that the proud Trojans of Citadel fall before your spear, not even before Achilles, far greater man than you. <laughs> and Patroclus gave ground, backing a good way off. <laughs> <laughs> Clear of the deadly archer's wrath. I mean, yeah, it, yeah, you can't go. That's kind of scary. Yeah, yeah, I mean, that's a good call. When when a when a god throws you, <laughs> like, don't times, do it. So. <laughs> He's like, hey, 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 hey! <laughs> <laughs> whoa, whoa, whoa! <laughs> Stop it! <laughs> but now Hector, oh. reining his high-strung team at the Skian gates, debated a moment, waiting. Should he drive back to the route and soldier on, or call his armies now to rally within the ramparts? As he turned things over, Apollo stood beside him, taking the shape of that lusty, rugged fighter, Asius, an uncle of stallion-breaking Hector, a blood brother of Hecuba, son of Dimas, who lived in the Phrygia near Sangarius Rapids. Like him, Apollo, the son of Zeus, incited Hector. Hector, why stop fighting, neglecting your duty? If only I outfought you as you can outfight me. I'd soon teach you to shirk your work in a war. You'd pay the price, I swear. Up with you, fast. Lash those pounding stallions straight at Patroclus. You might kill him still. Apollo might give you glory. And back Apollo strode, a god in the wars of men, while glorious Hector ordered skilled Sobrianes Log the team to battle. Yeah. Hector yeah. goes on. He ignores the Argive masses, killing none. He lashed his pounding stallions straight at Patroclus. 
And then Patroclus picks up a jagged glittering stone that his hand could just cover. Not a very big stone. Mm. Blings it at Sobrianes, the driver, hits him right between the eyes. The sharp Ooh. stone crushed both brows. The skull Jeez. caved in and both eyes burst from their sockets, dropping down. Oh my down. God. <laughs> dropping Dude, down. That's the quite the hit. I don't. I feel like we need Mythbusters for this because I don't yeah, think that a like... human could throw a little pebble that hard. Dude, it sounds like you got hit by space debris in orbit. Like, what the hell? <laughs> <laughs> he exploded. Well, no man, no man today could throw a rock like that. It would take no, two men today. It would take two men. I forgot that Patroclus wasn't of today. Yeah. He's, he's a legend. Um the eyes dropping down in the dust before his feet as the rainsman vaulted, plunging off his well-wrought car like a diver. Sobrianes' life breath left his bones behind. And you taunted his corpse, Patroclus, oh my rider. Look what a springy man, a <laughs> nimble, flashy tumbler. So Just right. think what he'd do at sea where the fish swarm, why the man could glut a fleet diving for oysters, plunging overboard, even in choppy, heaving seas, just as he dives to ground from this war car now. Even these Trojans have their tumblers. What a leap. He sounds like he's having, like, a, a, a power... Uh, what's that called? Yeah. Trip, power, right? trip. power trip, thank you. He's definitely having a bit of a power trip. He's mm. having a power. <laughs> like a power. <laughs> <laughs> So they begin to fight over Sobrianes' body. Middle of 437, Hector seized the corpse's head, would not let go. Patroclus clung to a foot, and the other fighters clashed, Trojans' argives on a grueling, maiming onset. So yikes. This is a it's, bad tug of war. I'm starting to feel less bad about him dying. <laughs> so the Greeks actually do get Sobrianes. They dragged the hero Sobrianes out from under the pelting shafts and Trojans' piercing cries, and they tore the handsome war gear off his back. And Patroclus charged the enemy, fired for the kill. Three times he charged with the headlong speed of Ares, screaming his savage cry, and three times he killed nine men. Then at the fourth assault, Patroclus, like something superhuman, then Patroclus, the end of life, came blazing up before you. Yes, the Lord Apollo met you there in the heat of battle, the god, the terror. Patroclus never saw him coming, moving across the deadly route, shrouded in thick mist, and on he came against him, and looming up behind him now, slammed his broad shoulders and back with the god's flat hand, and his eyes spun as Apollo knocked the helmet off his head, and under his horse's hoofs it tumbled, clattering on with its four forged horns and its hollow blank eyes and its plumes were all smeared in the bloody dust. Oof. So the helmet of Achilles fell off Patroclus. Apollo knocked it off. Now everyone knows it's Patroclus, mm. not Achilles. Because mm. Patroclus it does not have Achilles' fiery red hair. Mm. Um, and is not... Very different it's looking. Not Achilles. It's very clearly not Achilles. It's not hot enough for Achilles. <laughs> Wait, you're not that hot. You can't be. You're not that hot. You're not Achilles. Achilles is banging. Like, you're like a sick. You can't be Achilles. <laughs> you're like a sick. <laughs> so the helmet. I just roasted in the battle thing. <laughs> Maybe the first time. Oh, fresh. So it goes under, gets clattered in the bloody dust. Forbidden before this was the helmet to defile its crest in dust. It guarded the head and handsome brow of a god, a man like a god, Achilles. But now the father gave it over to Hector to guard his head in war. So Hector gets Achilles' helmet since Hector's death was closing in on him quickly. Patroclus, though, the spear in his grip was shattered, the whole of its rugged, bronze-shod, shadow-casting length and his shield with straps and tassels dropped from his shoulders, flung down on the ground. And Lord Apollo, the son of Zeus, wrenched his breastplate off. So now he has no helmet, no breastplate in the middle of this war. 
Disaster seized him. Patroclus' fine legs buckling. He stood there, senseless, and now, right at his back, close up, a Darden fire fighter speared him squarely between the shoulder blades with a sharp lance. Mm. Panthus' son, Euphobus, the best of his own age, at spears and at horseman's skill and speed of foot, and even in this, his first attack in chariots, just learning the art of war, he brought down 20 drivers off their cars. He was the first to launch a spear against you, Patroclus, oh my rider, but did not bring you down. Yanking out his ashen shaft from your body, back he dashed and lost himself in the crowds. The man would not stand up to Patroclus here in mortal combat, stripped defenseless as he was. Patroclus, stunned by the spear and the god's crushing blow, was weaving back to his own thronging comrades, trying to escape death. Hector, waiting, watching, the great-hearted Patroclus trying to stagger free, seeing him wounded there with a sharp bronze, came rushing into him right across the lines and rammed his spear shaft home, stabbing deep in the bowels, and the brazen point went jutting straight out through Patroclus's back. Down he crashed, and horror gripped the Achaean armies. As when some lion overpowers a tireless wild boar up on a mountain summit, battling in all their fury over a little spring of water, both beasts craving to slake their thirsts, but the lion beats him down with sheer brute force as the boar fights for breath. So now, with a close thrust, Hector, the son of Priam, tore the life from the fighting son of Menoetius. From Patroclus, who had killed so many men in war and gloried over him, wild winging words. Patroclus, surely you must have thought you'd storm my city down. You'd wrest from the wives of Troy their day of freedom, drag them off in ships to your own dear fatherland. You fool. Rearing in their defense, my war team, Hector's horses were charging out to battle, galloping full stretch. And I, with my spear, Hector, shining among my combat-loving comrades, I fight away from them the fatal day. But you, the vultures, will eat your body raw. Poor, doomed, not for all his power could Achilles save you now. And how he must have filled your ears with orders as you went marching out, and the hero stayed behind. Now don't come back to the hollow ships, you hear? Patroclus, master horseman, not till you slashed the shirt around his chest and soaked it red in the blood of man-killing Hector. So he must have commanded, you maniac, you obeyed. Sorry, Lacey was snoring. I didn't want it. <laughs> so H Hector's assumption is that Achilles ordered Patroclus to kill him. Not true, but that's what he thinks. Mm. Now yet Patroclus' last words, struggling for breath, you answered, Patroclus, oh my rider. Hector, now is your time to glory to the skies. <clears throat> now the victory is yours. A gift of the son of Cronus, Zeus. Apollo, too. They brought me down with all their deathless ease. They are the ones who tore the armor off my back. Even if twenty Hectors had charged against me, they'd have died here laid low by my spear. No, deadly fate in league with Apollo killed me. From the ranks of men, Euripet, Euphorbus, you came third, and all you could do was finish off my life. One more thing. Take it to heart, I urge you. You too, you won't live long yourself, I swear. Already I see them looming up beside you, death and the strong force of fate to bring you down at the hands of Achaeus' great royal son, Achilles. His last word is Achilles. Oh. And then he dies. <laughs> then. Rip. Death cut him short. <laughs> the end. It's like, y'all shut up. <laughs> <It's fucked laughs> <so much>. <laughs> <laughs> That is something that is uh, carried over from Shakespeare, the mm -hmm. monologue before death. While <laughs> the very died. long monologue after his guts have been spilled. <laughs> <laughs> Father, he has killed me, and so on. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I died. The end closed in around him, flying free of his limbs. 
His soul went winging down to the house of death, wailing his fate, <clears throat> leaving his manhood far behind, his oh. young and supple strength. But glorious Hector taunted Patroclus's body, dead as he was. Why, Patroclus, why prophesy my doom, my sudden death? Who knows? Achilles, the son of sleek-haired Thetis, may outrace me, struck by my spear first and gasp away his life. With that, he planted a heel against Patroclus's chest, wrenched his brazen spear from the wound, kicked him over, flat on his back, free and clear of the weapon. At once, he went for Automedon with that spear, quick as a god, the aid of swift Achilles, keen to cut him down, but his bearing horses swept him well away. Magnificent racing stallions, gifts of the gods to Peleus, shining immortal gifts. Oh. That was a fresh um, chapter. Yeah. A lot happened. Yeah. Oh. Dancer died? Yeah, that's the big oh, dancer died. Dancer. <laughs> Rest in peace. That poor horse. <laughs> this was depicted very differently in the movie, and I think this version is better. Yeah. What's it depicted in the movie? Wait, don't spoil it for um, when we watch the movie. Say, oh, you're right, you're right. I don't know what I was thinking. It, it has to be, like, in this version of the story, it has to be impactful because it's why Achilles goes back to war. Like, Agamemnon never apologizes sufficiently. Like, this is just it. Like, uh -huh. he's so pissed because his his lover got murked. Mm -hmm. that, that whole thing is kind of just brushed over. And like, it but just how? Kind of like how though? It's like the most important chapter in the book. How can you just not do it? Uh, like they do it. Don't get me wrong. This whole thing does happen, but it's just like the depiction is not as climactic as it is here. And it's just like uh, I'm not gonna spoil much, and I probably don't remember it very accurately because it's been like ten years since I've seen it. But no, it is also more disappointing. No, you, yeah, you <laughs> could have seen it yesterday, it would be the same. It's not like yes, we the built a, a horse in the movie, like, but no. Do they do the Trojan horse? Yes, yes, <laughs> they do the Trojan horse, but yeah, the Trojan horse does happen. <laughs> it's just kind of lame. Yeah. I remember liking the movie, but the more I think about it, like, they don't do a fantastic job of building stuff up. It is a fun movie to watch, yeah. but, like, it, it's clear which corners they cut when you read the book yeah. and how those corners were, like, you know, the nice, tasty corners. It is too bad because this could be an amazing movie if they did it right. Mm -hmm. I do think it was a good movie. I mean, I said I hear a remake. <laughs> oh, you hear a remake? Yeah, yeah. Wait, Maybe really? Are you serious? Before, before my ears. <laughs> oh. <laughs> so predictions. How do you think Achilles is going to take this news? Not yeah, good. I, He's already I, so I, angry. <laughs> he'll he'll, he'll get all angry, but then he'll be like somehow so sad. And angry and sad. Like sad. All the stages of grief uh, like in one minute. <laughs> yeah. And then he just sticks with anger and then goes into battle. I think he's going to yeah. process the emotions and be a man about it and then kind of grow up. And then... Now, there's <laughs> one thing. His dad yeah. didn't die. I don't, I don't think he can be too sad or mad. To be sad. There's one thing we may not have thought of, and that's that Achilles doesn't have his armor anymore. Oh, no. Oh. He's going oh, there. God. Bare naked lady style. Or is he gonna like hide in someone else's armor? Oh, oh, that's a thought. Maybe Tom gonna come back and be like, "Achilles, the worst thing ever." The kids is gonna be like, "Tom why are you crying? Go a little bitch!" And blah 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 blah. blah. <laughs> you cry like a little. Bitch. Are you crying? Did, did your dad die? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, Patroclus died, and Tom will be like, "Yes, he died," and the kids will be like, "No, no." It's my prediction. No, no. No. This is, this is all a prediction. It's good. It's pretty salsa. I gotta say, I feel like this is like gonna be the best part of the book now from now on.